If your mini painting journey is going too slowly, then you should try this eight things to improve. I wish I found them earlier myself. Number one, try a three-way. There are three main ways that you can go about highlighting and shading your model. You can go from dark to light, from light to dark, and from the middle tone, both in shadows and in highlight. I don't think there is a big difference in these types of approaches because it's more about what it's more comfortable for you. And maybe you're stuck with the same approach because someone told you this is the way, this is the right approach, this is what you should be using. And guess what? They're wrong, I think. They're wrong, I think. The fact that you're starting from a lighter base coat doesn't mean you can go actually lighter. Maybe if you start from white, that would be an exception, but in any other cases, you can go lighter. And the same thing can be said about darker base coats. The only cool addiction that uh, starting with a middle tone has is that you get the chance to see the actual color of the surface you want to paint, which is not something that you can see with starting from dark base coat or a lighter base coat. But the point here is, Try. Try new methods, new approaches, new things. And in trying these methods, you're eventually going to figure out what approach is better for you. Number two, keep staple colors on the palette. In my humble opinion, there are few colors that you should always keep on your palette. No matter what you're painting, they are always going to be useful. Except for the obvious ones, like black and white, I usually keep the following colors on my palette as staple colors. The first one is like a brownish sand, like a beige, which can be used for many different things, for leather, for wood, and also for skin tones. Very flexible color. A dark reddish brown or a more orangey brown, depending on what I'm actually painting at the moment. A dark gray, which I usually don't mix it myself because for me it's kind of hard to maintain a consistent gray tone while mixing it so i'm just just using the pots kill me for that and finally i always keep some ice yellow on my palette because it's a good color to highlight with and also to add saturation with does that make sense you can start trying using these colors here and maybe change them around as you go and as you are more aware of what you actually like having a staple color palette i think is very useful and it gives me a sense of security and stability, which my mental health kind of needs at the moment. Number three, choose a simple palette. Simple. Ah, I know, I know. It can be inspiring, exciting to choose a color scheme for a miniature. All that bare plastic just waiting to be filled with colors, random colors, right? That's nice. That That's nice. But maybe you shouldn't overdo it because otherwise your model is gonna look like a clown. Pick one, two, maximum three colors to use on your project and fill the rest with more dull down and neutral color. Always trying to remember to incorporate every single tone in every part of the model. That's pretty much the secret of having a cohesive color scheme and a cohesive palette that works throughout your whole model. Number four, don't blend everything. I remember when I first got serious with miniature painting, I was obsessed in finding the right way to get perfectly smooth blends. And not by any chance, my first video was called how to achieve smooth blends. You should look, no, don't do it, it's crunch, ew. Then I realized, wait a minute, if I look at this from here, I can really see the layers that much. I'll keep them like this. Oh my God, I'm a f genius. With enough layers and enough contrast, you won't even notice the unblended layers. But Alice, I don't know where to place the highlights. Okay, okay, Jesus Christ, calm down. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna deal with this, okay? Sorry, I'm about to die from sleep deprivation, apparently. Have patience. Of course, I have the answer for it, or better, Lila has it. Number five is get inspired by other artists to know where to place your highlights. And when I say get inspired, I, I do mean copy. I think Lila explained it a lot better than me in one of the latest video. I will link that video down below. Uh, go watch it, but not, not now. Now you stay, you stay here, right? Don't 
The point is, you don't need to spend hours and hours studying, looking at references, looking at shapes and trying to figure out how the light hits the shapes and how the different materials work. You don't need to do that if you don't want to. You don't need to know all that in order to paint a credible miniature. You just need to get inspired by someone else's work. And then if it's not 100% correct, it's fine. It's gonna be realistic enough for us to look at your model and get him immersed into the world of Warhammer or whatever you're painting. So go to Instagram, go to Putty and Paint, go to whatever and take a look at their model and try to figure out where they place their highlights and the shadows. Or you know, you can join my Patreon and get video feedback on where to place your highlights. Link in the description. Number six, focus on the main parts of the model. This might be a very unpopular opinion, which I, I never I never have those, but I don't really think that you need to paint 100% of your model for calling it done. Also, what's 100%? It's non-existent. You could keep going to the same model over and over and over and keep blending, keep adding stuff. You could do it forever, like a new form of punishment. <laughs> It could potentially go on forever. Endeavor. 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 Instead of getting stuck into useless details or hyper focusing on details and perfectionism, try to put all that focus back into one part of the model. And I bet that part is gonna be great. And no, this is not me being lazy and not wanting to finish a piece and pretending I painted it all so I can feel good by myself. In all seriousness, now really try to condition your brain into letting go of that useful stuff, those useful details and focus focus on one main thing. If you do that, you'll see your army getting bigger and your skills improving. Number seven, add definition. When you look at your model, you go, meh. That's probably because it lacks definition. And that's what washes are for, adding definition in a simple and easy way. And they must certainly do so, but the issue what, that I have with washes is that they kind of leave the surface very dirty, so you should try it differently. If you like a certain grimdart look, it's fine. Go with the wash, go with whatever. But if you're more lean towards a boxer look and you don't want to take 100 years to paint your whole army, you might want to try these two things. Black lining and matte and flat layers. I actually started to notice this years ago when I was 12 and my sister had a schoolmate that painted miniatures and I gave him I think it was Grey Knights to paint, which he painted like Ultramarines, which is ah oh, heretic. The paint job was incredibly simple, but incredibly effective as well. Flat and matte colors, defined areas, and finally breaking up the monotony with some accent colors. This is a very smart way of painting. It's a way that really doesn't waste time and it looks very good. And finally, number eight, don't head highlight everything. Oh, okay, it's fair to say that edge highlights are those things that helps us define our model better. But I think sometimes, especially when beginners are involved, we might overdo it a little bit too much. Know what I mean? In reality, not every single hedge of an object is highlight. Just take a look at this heavy metal space marine. And then take a look at this. As you can see, not every edge catches the light. Well, I had a bad day, so I think I'm gonna go. I bet you didn't heard of, you haven't heard of these tips. Let me know down below and maybe subscribe or unsubscribe, whatever.